Okay, I see that it is right at seven o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we want to honor your time and we thank you all for joining us this evening for the January installment of the Kansas 4-H Animal Science Webinar Series. Uh, we are going to continue this webinar series, but I do want to let you know that after this month, we're going to go to a recorded format. And so we will process through how we're going to do the Q&A on that. Um, but want to make sure that we honor your time this evening. A couple of housekeeping things. Uh, we are recording and we will post the recording to the Kansas 4-H Animal Science webinar um, website. And we do ask that if you would give us your feedback, there is a Qualtrics survey link on that page as well. And it just allows us to evaluate the value and the effectiveness of the webinar series. And there should be an option in there for you to give us some ideas of, of additional uh, webinars that you would be interested in attending. So you are welcome to go back and listen to this later on, um, or if you need to just refresh your memory on a few things, uh, that's a good opportunity. I am Kelsey Nordyke. I am the Southeast Region 4-H Specialist and then also the 4-H Ag Science Specialist. And with me tonight is Dr. Carol Fike from the Department of Animal Science and Industry with Kansas State University. And she's going to share with you tonight about animal nutrition career path opportunities. We are going to have an opportunity for Q&A. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and enter those into the chat and we'll address those questions. Or at the end, we'll also give, the, give you the chance to either enter your questions into the chat or go ahead and unmute and ask your questions then. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Fike, and I'm going to mute, and we'll get started. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm glad to be here with you this evening, and um, I appreciated having the opportunity um, last fall to share a little bit about career paths and opportunities in the animal reproduction realm, and when uh, Kelsey reached out uh, earlier about talking about animal nutrition. I had indicated that while I'm not an animal nutritionist, one of the roles that I have in the department is working with our students on uh, career path and internship opportunities. And um, so I um, wanted to come at it from that angle to share with you tonight. Um, just you will barely scratch the surface of some examples of um, the companies and organizations that our students coming through animal sciences do it as interns um, during their college time and then go on to um, in full-time jobs and sometimes additional education, earning potentially for some master's degrees or PhDs and um, that, that deal with animal nutrition. And so we're gonna touch on a few of those examples um, you know, we probably won't cover every species and every type of opportunity in uh, tremendous detail, but it will certainly give you a perspective um, of the things that the wide variety of um, opportunities that exist for young people like yourself to establish uh, to establish careers and and uh, um, and to work in in animal agriculture and with companion animals and. Uh, food animals alike. Um, so as you see, uh, my email is here, carol at ksu.edu. Uh, if there's things that we can help you with to, to follow up with, please don't, don't hesitate to, to drop me an email. And on the right there, that QR code, if you would want to use that um, now or go back and get it later when it's posted um, to, to share any of your contact information, if there's some things that we can follow up with you on um, just what educational opportunities there are, or, um, or uh, however we might be able to help you, we want, want to make sure and address that for you. So as as we go forward, um, I've just here got a smattering of examples of um, the kind of species that we're we really encompass in animal sciences, uh, and um, and we're going to try and talk about um, animal nutrition uh, as related to all these species, and so. Um, that ranges from sheep and goats, and I'll give you some examples here. Um, this is one of our animal sciences student up in the upper left-hand corner at our sheep and goat unit that is working in, uh, 
is a part of a class, an undergraduate research class. Doesn't mean you have to want to be a researcher in animal sciences, but where they're learning about the species or more in depth about those species in a hands-on role at our sheep and meat goat units, um, learning about how a different dietary formulation might affect average daily gain or feed efficiency or might affect uh, some other performance measures or um, meat outcome for animals that are harvested for meat. Um, and so I uh, get in, an idea of um, how to conduct research, how to communicate about research. And in this case, uh, many of those projects have involved the nutrition realm. Uh, same thing has been done at our animal units on the swine side of things. In the, um, they, they do many swine related nutrition studies and our undergraduate students are actively involved in um, gaining those experiences. Again, whether or not they want to particularly go into a career in animal nutrition, understanding research, getting a variety of experiences with different species is integral to that. Um, here also in the upper left-hand corner, we have a young man. This is just from a program that we just had a couple of weeks ago in the department called our Feedlot Boot Camp. And we have tremendous amount of industry supporters. And um, uh, we took 17 students from Kansas State in both animal sciences and ag econ agriculture economics, ag business. Um, and spent a few days out at Garden City and going to a variety of feedlots. And in this case, we have this young man that is working from an animal nutrition standpoint on creating corn flakes, steam flaked corn, that is a common dietary ingredient in our Western Kansas feedlot industry and understanding um, proper nutrition and the creation of a proper flake and how to read bunks when we're feeding cattle and judge um, what their needs are in, to maximize average daily gain of feed efficiency. And that was one small part of that whole uh, week-long hands-on experience in addition to getting to network with a variety of industry professionals from uh, nutritional consultants to feedlot managers to animal people from animal health companies that provide products to the feedlots um, where we're trying to, again, make connections in not only learning, but again, for internships and, and, uh, and jobs. And um, so those are just some examples, but we're, we deal with all the species listed here, um, swine, the horses, to dairy and beef cattle, to cats and dogs, to poultry, and to sheep and goats. And that encompasses um, what we're all about here in animal sciences, and then more specifically in the nutrition realm. So the next few slides, I just want to go through with you. I'm not expected to read all of this on the internship examples, but I thought since this is going to live on after, if we want to go back and look in more detail. Um, but I'm going to give you some examples of where our students have done internships. And again, where there's internships, that are, there's jobs and that are related to animal nutrition. And so this is an example of um, Clayton Sardella, a graduate from a handful of years ago from uh, Animal Sciences. And he was a feed sales intern with uh, Land Lakes Purina. And what they do in the case of some of their internships is they actually have um, a, a collaborative arrangement with the company Land Lakes uh, Purina that is involved in um, uh, feed product uh, development, research, uh, sales and marketing. Um, and then local co-ops that carry those Land Lakes and, and uh, uh, feed and Purina products. So that might be a local cooperative in your county or in your nearby town that may have this, again, collaborative relationship. And so uh, Clayton, if I remember correctly, he was um, with Land Lakes Purina at a co-op in the southeastern part of Kansas uh, for the summer. And, um, and again, he was a feed sales intern. And so he was working on, you know, developing relationships with customers that had livestock, whether that be horses, whether that be beef cattle, whether that be show pigs um, in the area and understanding how they can be of help uh, as a representative of that local co-op and Land Lakes Purina products um, to provide products and services for their operations. And so you're involved in education, you're involved in sales, you're involved in identifying new customers um, ultimately that are, that are bringing together um, the people that are producing and providing expertise about these products to um, 
to, to raise those animals and care for those animals again across a wide variety of livestock species. And so um, that's what Clayton was involved in. He actually went on to a full-time position with Land O'Lakes uh, Purina right after graduation and then actually went on to um, in a couple other jobs and is uh, in, the, in the course of a couple of years and is now uh, with a with a company called Zoetis and specifically with uh, what's called performance livestock analytics that also has a nutrition component to it. Um, and so uh, examples of where um, where career paths can take you. They have also internships in specifically uh, here you see animal nutrition and husbandry where you're maybe involved in again, conducting feeding demonstrations as it says um, in this description um, and marketing if you're more on the communication side and um, have some creativity um, uh, components to your want to be involved in social media they have um, uh, responsibilities in those realms as well as the technical realms of new product development and sales so one example there uh, here's another example of um, a, a student that is now completing his name is Stetson Herzog that's now completing his uh, back, uh, master's degree in dairy nutrition here, but he was an undergraduate student. Um, he's actually from Indiana and came to Kansas State University because of you know the things that uh, we offer and the hands-on opportunities and, and really being in the heart of livestock country. Um, and he had specifically done an internship with a, a local to him in, back in Indiana, but we have the same kinds of operations and the same kind of businesses here in the state of Kansas. Uh, but he worked with a, a company called Belstra Milling, uh, who doesn't exist in Kansas, but we have other you know, feed milling operations uh, in the state of Kansas. And so um, in his uh, internship as a feed manufacturing and milling intern, he was involved in the manufacturing of custom feed products. This is just one example of a goat show feed that, in, um, that um, a company might be involved in. Um, you could have, you could find equine products, you find beef cattle products, you can find dairy cattle products, right? But somebody's got to manufacture these feeds that you would find in a co-op, that you would find in a place like Tractor Supply or Orchland Farm Supply, or again at a local co-op, or you might have custom manufactured for your own particular needs and your own particular operation. And so um, he was involved in uh, ration formulations, working with producers and with the people at that uh, company, again, in sales and consulting, and, um, and, and those uh, types of products can be produced for both livestock and pets. It just depends on the nature of the company and, and operation. And so um, that can be, as you can see, Stetson down here on the bottom center, um, you know, uh, organizing and moving feed products um, as, as they're being shipped out uh, to, different, uh, to different customers. In the upper right-hand corner, where he is um, involved in the manufacturing, in this case, a particular premix that's going to go into the manufacturing of a particular product, and understanding the logistics of this whole feed manufacturing facility, and, um, and being involved in that operations of that from day to day. So that's just another example. Um, here's one that um, we've just been communicating, or I've just been communicating in the past couple of weeks um, to our current students um, because they have this internship that's called this Beef Nutrition Internship that is available to our students for this coming summer of 2023. And they have to submit applications for this opportunity. And again, where there's internships, there's jobs. And that's why these companies are seeking young people and seeking college students um, you know, to come and work with them and, and to gain some insight and in, in experience and, and to help them, again, pave the way with some experience to, to what they might want to do for their longer term uh, careers. Um, and so this is one where the applications for this are due at the end of the month here. Um, but this is called a beef nutrition internship. The, the young lady that's um, pictured uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, her name is Jordan O'Neill. I knew her as Jordan Cox in the time she was here as an undergraduate student, but she uh, did, her, did her undergraduate degree here in animal sciences and then went on and earned her master's and PhD um, and is uh, currently a nutrition consultant with Great Plains Livestock Consulting. 
Um, but they have, this Great Plains Livestock Consulting has roles within their company and organization uh, at the bachelor's level, at the master's degree level, and at the PhD level. And so she just happened to go on and, and uh, earn her PhD and become this nutritional consultant. And so specifically in the beef nutrition internship role, um, they, they are assisting these consultants. And there's, I want to say, uh, probably 15, 20, maybe 25 full-time consultants. Uh, in her case, she services territories kind of in the southeastern part of the United States. But the bulk of the areas that they service are cow-calf and feedlots um, kind of in the Great Plains states. And so in the central part, the Midwestern. Um, but they are expanding in other areas. And so that's why she's located there. Um, and so they're doing feedlot consulting, ration formulation for feeding programs. Again, um, most of this is related to beef cattle, but I think they also do some dairy cattle work. Um, um, you know, understanding uh, profitability and profit projections for their customers, um, developing mineral formulations for the particular needs, what might be deficient in the grasses and what might be in abundance in the grazing uh, areas um, and understanding that in designing um, mineral formulations that are particular to that customer and their needs. So that, those might be examples of what you do. Um, and, and the intern is assisting those consultants, um, learning by um, visiting with their various potential customers, feed mills, farms, ranches, beef cattle producers, feedlots, um, developing customers, writing uh, articles about the services they offer and about new and contemporary issues um, in, the, in the animal nutrition industry or the animal nutrition realm. And so that's another example. Here we're shifting gears a little bit on species. Um, probably many of you have heard about, you know, Hills, uh, Hills Nutrition, Hills Pet Nutrition. And so uh, Hills uh, has uh, their headquarters right now out of Topeka, Kansas, is my understanding. So they have their manufacturing facilities and their headquarters out of Topeka. My understanding is it was recently announced that part of their, um, I think part of their headquarters um, just because they're expanding and growing maybe so much and, and uh, want to have a footprint in the Kansas City area. And so it's not that they're leaving Topeka, it's kind of that they're, um, they're having some of their um, administration located in the Kansas City area as well. That was announced recently. Um, Emily Hudson, a um, young lady that's pictured in the bottom right, left hand corner, is um, again a former K State animal science student, graduated in the past couple of years. She did an internship with um, uh, Hills while she was a student, so uh, maybe going a couple of days a week um, from Manhattan, Kansas to Topeka and working part-time and then um, earned a job upon her graduation and went up a couple steps, I think, in her roles and is now an associate scientist in their research and innovation and so product development um, for pets. And so, um, different kind of nutrition, um, but the same principles apply. Um, it's just that we're working on um, companion animal, um, particularly cats and dogs and uh, other small animal species um, for their nutritional products. And so I've kind of highlighted on the right-hand side or not highlighted, but put in the red box, maybe some of those areas that are most directly related to where our animal sciences students go. So a quality assurance of those ingredients that go into uh, pet food manufacturing, um, research and development. So um, understanding how adding an ingredient, adding a particular ingredient might change the color or the flavor of a pet food product. And it can be flavorful, but if it doesn't have a nice appealing color that the parent of the pet thinks is okay for their um, for their for their pet, then the the parent of the pet, the owner might not purchase that product. So right, we got to understand something about not just quality, but the appearance, the smell, the taste for the pet. And somebody's got to do research on that, right? Somebody has got to um, you know have the the dogs and cats that have a choice of which product to pick and which did they pick? Which did they pick more often? Um, what 
uh, are we still meeting their nutritional requirements? Um, understanding that in the research and development process. And then you got to buy people that are involved in sales and marketing. And so they may be meeting with veterinary clinics, with veterinarians, with um, uh, uh, retail places that market the Hills Pet products and meeting with them and meeting their needs in terms of products and trying to develop new customers for those products. And so we have animal sciences students that are involved in uh, any and all of these areas, and certainly in those, there's internships, and where there's internships, there's jobs, and we have students going into those roles coming through animal sciences that relate to animal nutrition on the companion animal side. And there's many more companies than just Hills. You know, there's Mars Pet Care, for example. There's um, uh, many, again, many other companies uh, across the United States, that, uh, but this is one right in our backyard. Um, here's another example. Uh, probably a lot of you have maybe seen the Cargill logo or heard of Cargill. Um, have a definite presence, uh, a, a significant presence in the state of Kansas, uh, but frankly, uh, worldwide. Um, but um, we have uh, Cargill Meat uh, Solutions uh, in, based in Wichita. We have Cargill Nutrition um, in the Kansas City area. Um, this uh, young man, his name is Con Connor Chesky, and he uh, came through animal sciences and um, did a couple of different internships. And um, one of them was with um, Hargill as a management associate, associate intern. And really as a management associate, that's kind of a, a fancy word or title where they, they get to go through um, various aspects of um, the types of roles and responsibilities within Cargill Animal Nutrition. Um, and that way, then when and if they get hired on in a full time role, they they know where they're what part they like best and Cargill knows where that person fits best in terms of um, in terms of the types of job and those responsibilities. And so um, he uh, ended up going through this internship and now is working full time for Cargill in the Kansas City area. And if I remember correctly, I think he is in. Um, either commodity merchandising or, uh, or in pricing, if I remember correctly, uh, in a full-time role. And so these are examples, of, again, of where there's internships and specific jobs within Cargill Animal Nutrition. So pricing might involve pricing of specific ingredients that go into manufacturing a particular feed. Um, supply chain strategy and execution, that's a fancy term for, okay, well, do we make sure that if we're going to use these particular particular products to manufacture or particular ingredients to manufacture a particular feed product, can we readily access those uh, for reasonable prices uh, for an extended period of time uh, so that we have a quality and a consistent product? Um, feed formulation, again, merchandising, employee engagement. Um, so a variety of things that aren't all necessarily supposed to understand what all those mean, but those are things that we learn about in more detail in college and on the job and um, and then get comfortable with and, and contribute to the um, success of that business as you, as you learn more and as you move forward. Uh, here's another example um, um, that was uh, in the past couple of years. Actually, Caitlin is uh, still an animal sciences student, is uh, finishing up in her senior year, as I believe. Um, I spoke at the beginning about a feedlot boot camp program, and Caitlin was a part of that. Um, I, I believe it was last year. And off the heels of that program, she um, I took an internship with Cobalt Cattle. Um, and they have a number of feedlots in the western part of, of the state, and she was an intern at a feedlot. Um, and so that very much involves animal nutrition. It involve, also involves animal health. It also involves sales and marketing and all those kinds of things. And so some examples of the things that she did that related to animal nutrition are here on the next couple of slides. And so for part of her uh, internship, she spent time in the mill. And so they have a, a feed mill at the feedlot. Um, because you're constantly making feed to have that continuous supply of feed for uh, thousands of cattle in that feedlot um, uh, at one time. And so in the mill, again, these are all things that she would tell you herself that 
and, and I certainly don't know, to go in and do that. You, you're not expected to go in and know how to do that stuff just coming out of a class or just coming into college. But they teach you, right? You have some foundational knowledge. You have things that you've learned about in classes. You have a work ethic. You express interest. You ask questions. And they learn and teach you how to apply that knowledge and walk you through these things as you have those experiences. And then pretty soon you become an expert and can uh, can help run these operations. And so in the mill, she sampled feedstuffs. And so that might involve um, regular sampling of maybe it's the corn, maybe it's the supplement that's put in there, maybe it's something like distiller's grains. And do they have the protein content that today that there um, is the same as last week, is the same as the next week, and is that consistent enough so that we know that we're meeting the nutritional needs of those animals and that we're maximizing or be, being able to optimize their average daily being and feed efficiency. And so in order to do that and to know those things, you have to be able to sample and test and know whether or not those are uh, consistent in the things that we care about, such as protein content or energy content or mineral content. Um, uh, other, you know, keep an inventory of feed ingredients, regular cleaning and maintenance. Um, here on the bottom panel on the right-hand side, testing the, the steam flake corn for moisture content. And what's the quality of that flake that we're creating and, and how we create that. It does just look like corn flakes that you might uh, eat for breakfast. It's not the same thing, but it's very, it has some similarities. Um, but they're creating those flakes to make that all the, those good nutrients that those carbo, the, that starch that's in that corn uh, available, more readily available to the animal to be digested and used for, for growth and, and, and putting on muscle. And so um, th those are some examples of responsibilities that she had. She was actually in the feed trucks, learning how to drive a feed truck and consistently and quickly deliver the feed. Um, on the upper right hand corner, it is shown that highly techno uh, technologically operated, highly sophisticated um, systems. Um, in this case, a computer system that's in the feed truck that shows you the amount to feed that has to be very precise and where to deliver it to the right pen and the right amount at the right time um, in order to run these businesses very, very efficiently and effectively. And so, uh, as you see on the left hand side in, in some of this uh, text, um, read the amount of feed left in the bunk. So that's what we call reading bunks. And so reading bunks in order to understand what is the appropriate amount that we should be feeding um, those cattle tomorrow, um, again, to maximize their gain and their feed efficiency. Uh, and so that we can, we can ultimately produce beef in a, an efficient manner and in a high quality manner for our consumers. Um, so made feed calls. So that's uh, after reading the bunks, seeing what's left in the bunks, how are the cattle acting? Are they acting hungry? Um, uh, do, do we feed them a little bit more today or tomorrow than we fed today? Or are they acting like they're um, maybe going off feed a little bit? And should we should we pull back in the amount that we're feeding them? And so but there's a real art to that. And um, understanding how to do that effectively um, really takes a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, time and patience and training to do that uh, effectively. And so those are just some examples there. That's pretty common in the feedlot industry. Um, this uh, this is getting into the last couple slides here. Here's a couple of uh, uh, it, just a smattering of examples on, on and some other areas. Um, on the left-hand side, this is Hector at Cargill, Turkey in Virginia. Hector is a young man from the Kansas City area that uh, came to animal sciences hadn't had the opportunity really to have um, much food animal species, but wanted uh, experience, but wanted to learn and had an interest in just animal care and management and production. And he took an advantage of an opportunity to work in, uh, in turkey production, again, without experience, um, but the desire to learn and, um, and, and did that is now working for Cargill Turkey full time. Um, but certainly part of what he did involved, um, uh, involved nutritional management. It also involved monitoring health 
and performance and uh, understanding of disease and, and um, health management, again, of turkeys, as well as the nutritional components. Um, on the right-hand side here was Seaboard Foods. This is Jaden. She was a farm operations intern at Seaboard Foods down in, the, um, down in Oklahoma. She's actually from Southwest Kansas and have a number of um, swine production operations in the state of Kansas. And um, Seaboard Foods is one of them in that, um, uh, their headquarters are in Kansas City, um, but, uh, and they have facilities in, in Colorado and in Oklahoma and some in Kansas as well. And she was a farm operations intern. And so her role is involved um, uh, nutritional management. That was a, a finishing pig operation that's at, uh, or a facility that's right there behind her. But she was involved in nursery pig management and uh, farrowing and um, uh, breeding, pig, uh, breeding sow management. And so part of that involved nutritional care and management and part of it involved all operations or all components of um, caring for um, caring for pigs. Um, the bottom core, uh, center is a, a company called Devonish that this was a couple of years ago that Carly Stockton um, uh, worked at, a, a former K-State uh, uh, animal sciences student where they were particularly doing um, uh, swine nutrition research um, and did some trials with um, the uh, proper, proper ingredients and different mixtures of ingredients that would be more effective for nursery pigs and then also on the sow side. And so this um, Devonish company, you know, they provide nutritional solutions and consulting and products um, in the swine industry, but in also some other species, primarily in the dairy cattle as well, for example. And then in the upper um, top, uh, Livestock Nutrition Center, Countryside Feeds, or just a couple of others. Um, Livestock Nutrition Center has presence in Kansas, also down into Oklahoma and Texas, I believe, Countryside Feeds here in Kansas that are also involved in providing animal nutrition products and consulting, especially for livestock, again, across sheep and goats and beef cattle and dairy cattle and horses and, um, you know, you name it. Um, there's needs for people that have expertise and experience in these areas. So uh, I know that uh, that uh, is just a, uh, barely scratching the surface of the types of uh, opportunities that exist within the animal nutrition area, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight. Again, uh, that when we're talking about, um, you know, product uh, uh, research, uh, um, product development, sales and marketing and consulting that spans across all different species, any animal species that you can think of, whether again that be companion animals or food animals, um, those needs are there and the businesses and organizations that are involved in those um, uh, have all of those components in, in some fashion and look to College of Agriculture Animal Sciences students to help them um, run their businesses. And so um, where there's businesses, there's needs for excellent young professionals uh, like yourselves to, um, to, uh, to work and to help them be successful. Um, so happy to open up for any questions. If you want to use that QR code, you can follow K-State Animal Sciences on social media and certainly uh, reach out to us at any time if there's anything that we can help you with. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Fike. And it looks like we've got a question already in the chat. Um, the Reese family is asking, how can you find a nutritionist that deals with goats? Well, um, I, I could do some, do some work in that realm. Uh, so, you know, currently, um, uh, our, our sheep and goat extension specialist position is, um, uh, not filled in K-State Animal Sciences, but we do have faculty and staff on um, uh, here in Animal Sciences that um, either have some expertise themselves or have connections with within the industry and some of these uh, companies, for example, um, you know, I know some of the folks at Countryside Feeds or Wildcat Feeds that they sell those products. And so who within those companies and organizations maybe has the greatest level of expertise that we can connect you with. Um, and so if that's something that 
uh, you would be okay with shooting me an email. Maybe I can more individually uh, help connect you with somebody in your area um, that um, can meet those particular needs and I'd be glad to do that. Yes, and I might insert there too that um, this year's junior producer days are going to be, I believe, swine and meat goat. And so if you have not registered for the meat goat junior producer day at, on campus at K-State, it happens in March. Um, that's an excellent opportunity as well. I know that there will be some uh, rotations on nutrition and potentially some nutritionists with some feed companies available there as well. Um, Jenny Borman asking, what year in college do you have to be to get an internship? Yeah, um, uh, excellent question. And that, uh, I always hate getting this answer, but it's true. Uh, it depends. Um, I would say generally most uh, internship opportunities are kind of sophomore to senior year. There are some of these, especially on the production side, where we're talking about you know, maybe it's just learning more about the swine industry and the swine production operation where as a freshman, you can earn those internships. And so it's not exclusively junior or senior. Um, there's more and more opportunities that you could, that can be had even after your, after your freshman year. Um, but generally speaking, um, probably a lot of them are at least sophomore and some of them exclusively junior. But like I said, they're um, there's a lot of companies and organizations that's really about the right, the right fit, the right person at the right time, but they do, um, some of them do, you know, it just, you just have a little bit more foundation under you if you have a few more classes, maybe to get the most out of it yourself. And so, so maybe after that freshman year, you know, you just learn a little bit more about a particular species and the production level, and then maybe th then the next year you'll be able to go work at a at a Cargill or a Livestock Nutrition Center or a Great Plains Livestock Consulting or something like that after you got a little bit more classes under your belt. And I would encourage you guys too as well, once you get into college and you're at K-State, there are typically career fairs. And uh, I know for sure there's one that happens in the fall. And even if you're just a freshman, um, it's a great opportunity to visit those career fairs and visit with some of those employers find out what they're looking for and find out when they do offer internships and what on what internships they offer as well. Okay. That's, that's an excellent point, Kelsey. And the we work with those employers all the time and um, there there are hundreds of them at the at the all university career for career fair in September. And then there are more that aren't able to make it to the career fairs that share about their opportunities and for which you can apply or connect with them. And even if they indicate that, you know, they want, they're seeking for somebody that's a junior standing or graduating the next year or so, they will remember you when you stop by as a freshman and express interest and make that connection. And they love that and they remember who comes back multiple times because they see that as being truly interested and genuine and um, pleasantly persistent. And that's a good thing. Yes. Yes. What other questions do you guys have for Dr. Fike this evening? We'll give you a few more minutes. We're right at 738. I would, I would just, if there, as you're thinking about that, or if you have any other, you know, questions, certainly, um, certainly reach out. But I would just say that I hope you see this as um, the future of, in terms of opportunities uh, in animal agriculture or just in general, um, is very bright. And um, I, I, that's part of why I love what I do. Uh, is because there there's so many great businesses and organizations and leaders that are so enthused about young people like yourselves um, and um, the the there's just there's just so many opportunities and and they're looking to you folks and so the future is bright and you want to be a part of it just just know that it's it's there for the taking and so um, you know just take those next steps to you know, to go on to college and get a little bit more education and continue to get those experiences and do the great things you're doing as part of 4-H because um, those, are, those are important 
skills that you're developing and knowledge that you're developing by by doing what you're doing um, in your time in in the in school. Yes, absolutely. Well, as we're waiting just a couple more minutes too to see if we've got any additional questions, I will direct you back to the Kansas 4-H uh, Animal Science webinar page. Uh, the, all of the previous webinars are recorded and listed there. If you'll scroll down to the bottom of that page, you'll see all of those topics. Uh, we have covered one other career path so far, and that is careers in animal reproduction. And so if you're interested in looking at lots of different opportunities for careers in animal science and careers in agriculture. That's another opportunity to look at some things. Oftentimes when we consider animal agriculture, we think of being a veterinarian um, and we think of, we don't often think of all of the opportunities that are available. And so we wanna make sure that we expose you to some different opportunities that maybe you're not um, thinking of and haven't been exposed to before. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and begin to wrap up because I don't see any more questions coming in. But as a reminder, Dr. Fike's email address is there on the screen for you, and you can also use that QR code to contact her with additional questions. We will post the recording either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning and email that recording link out to each of you, um, as well as the link for the survey to provide feedback. So with that, I'd like to thank Dr. Fike once again for taking the time to share with us this evening. And thank you all for joining us. And we will see you next month. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.